Welcome to NHL Monopoly. How it works is every single team is going to start off with $1,500. Teams were selected on who were the top two in each division when I started the recording of this video. We will then do a dice roll to see how many spaces each team is going to be moving. If a team lands on an unoccupied property, then they can buy it. But if a team lands on an occupied property, then they're going to have to pay the fee associated with that space. There's also a couple other spaces on the board, and that's going to include the chance and community chest. If you land on the chance space, then we're going to spin the wheel of chance, and that's going to have a ton of good and bad outcomes. With community chest for every single round that passes $50 is going to be put into the chest. So if you land on this space, you will be paid accordingly to how many rounds have been completed. And then we have ourselves some basic Monopoly rules. So if you go to jail, then you have to try to spend a four or higher to get out of jail. And if you're unable to do that, then you're going to pay a $200 fine. And if you pass go, of course, you're going to be collecting $200. But how do you win NHL Monopoly? Well, there's three different ways you can win. Number one, after 10 rounds, you can have the most money in the bank. So you're going to be coming out on top. Number two, every single team at some point goes bankrupt and you're the last team standing. And number three, Three, which is probably the most unlikely outcome but I guess it could happen some team gets up to five thousand dollars and if you get up to five thousand dollars I highly doubt there's gonna be any team even close to you and of course I got to give a shout out to these legends like always Jay Kanda YNG Dean's World they're the inspirations for this video so it's finally to start off in round number one every team has fifteen hundred dollars and the Colorado Avalanche are gonna be rolling the dice first and with the very first roll for the Colorado Avalanche they're gonna be landing on the number two so the abs are gonna be getting two spots here and that means they're gonna be taking this brown space right here and that's going to cost them a hundred dollars so that's a hundred dollars down the drain for colorado but they're buying some property so they're making smart moves out here so here we go boss and all you got to do is not get the number two and you got the number two all right you're going to owe colorado some money here like really all you had to do is not get the number two on that dice roll and you would have been perfectly fine but instead you're going to land on two a one in six chance and because of that you're now sitting in last because you have the least amount of money that's a tough way to start out nhl monopoly so dallas try not to do what the boston bruins did and Okay, what's going on here? Is two really the only option? We might have to double check this, but I'm pretty sure I'm on the six side of dice. And after a quick double check, I am on the six side of dice. So the Dallas Stars, y'all are just getting incredibly unlucky as well. And now you have to pay Colorado $150. And with another $150 going to the Colorado Avalanche, they're up to $1,700. While the Dallas Stars, they're going to join the Boston Bruins at the bottom with $1,350. So this is the big test here. Are we going to find out that this is not a six sided dice and only a two sided die? We're going to find out right here. Five. I guess those last two teams were just incredibly unlucky. So unlike the Boston Bruins and Dallas Stars, although Philly's going to be spending a bit of money here, they're making smart financial decisions and they're acquiring property, not paying somebody else. we got the reigning Stanley Cup champions up next in the Vegas Golden Knights, and let's see how they can roll the die here. They're going to be landing on five, and that's definitely not a good look for them because they're going on some Philly property. So here goes the Vegas Golden Knights. They're going five spaces, but that's not a good look. Joining the Philadelphia Flyers here, and they're going to owe them some Money. So that's $175 down the drain for the Vegas Golden Knights. And that's going to be $175 into the bank account of the Philadelphia Flyers. So they're up to $1,550. I want to see some more property being bought here. I want to see if the New York Rangers can change things up. No, they're just going to owe Colorado money. And the rich continue to get richer as now the Colorado Avalanche are up to $1,850. So Detroit, I'm going to let you know this is a six-sided die. So that means you can get numbers other than five and two. You're going to be changing it up and it looks like you're getting three. And three is really going to be changing things up because property is not going to be getting bought here. But Detroit has a chance of winning a bunch of money or losing a bunch. So we got to go ahead and spin the wheel of chance. So we got the wheel of chance here. 15 different things that could happen to the Detroit Red Wings. Some good and some bad. And it looks like they're getting a good one. They're getting plus $150. So Detroit, things are looking great. You just got $150 and things are looking fantastic. But I can think of one thing that would be better than Detroit picking up $150. Stick on the ice passing them and YouTube subscribers because I'm still trying to pass Detroit. Detroit. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And while you're at it, you might as well drop a like. So we've got our final dice roll the first round and it's for the Vancouver Canucks and they're going to be landing on the number two. I think that's the most fitting way to end the first round. So right now five of our eight teams are currently sitting on the same spot and Colorado you were just incredibly lucky because you were the first team to roll here. So Vancouver you're going to be tied with three other teams as you're going to be left with $1,350. While Colorado you're going to be the first team to hit the $2,000 mark. Honestly I didn't even think this would be possible in the first round but here we are. So our very first challenge is a fairly simple one. 
we got ourselves a season simulation and points will be assigned on who finishes at the top and who finishes at the bottom. On top of that, an additional 100 points will be given to any team that can win the Stanley Cup. So after the season simulation, Carolina's going to be finishing first in the entire league, but that doesn't really matter because they're not in the challenge. The Dallas Stars, Colorado Avalanche, and New York Rangers are though, and they're going to be finishing 2, 3, and 4. Now Boston, although you're missing the postseason, out of our challenge teams here, you actually finished fourth, so that means you're getting 50 bones. While the Vegas Golden Knights, you're actually going to be losing $50. Our bottom three teams are going to be the Vancouver Canucks, although they're making the playoffs, they're 19th in the entire league. And then we have the Detroit Red Wings, who are finishing 28th, and the Philadelphia Flyers, they're finishing 30th. Now, we did have a couple of our teams in the postseason, but unfortunately, none of them are going to be able to win a Stanley Cup, as Dallas is making the deepest run, but they're falling in the Stanley Cup final to the Buffalo Sabres in six games. So with challenge number one in the books here, Dallas is going to be getting $200, Colorado $150, the Rangers $100, and the Boston Bruins $50, while the Vegas Golden Knights, Vancouver Canucks, Detroit Red Wings, the Philadelphia Flyers, they're all going to be losing money. So with round number one in the books, it looks like the Colorado Avalanche are the clear favorite here as they have $2,150, while the Vancouver Canucks, they're going to be sitting in last place here with $1,250. So it's time to start off round number two, and Colorado, of course, they're going to be rolling the dice first, and it looks like they're getting the number five. So we have five spaces for the Colorado Avalanche, and that's going to have them claiming another property. So although this is a pricier property, Colorado, this team's just made of money, so that's not going to hurt them financially. Next up is the Boston Bruins, and they're just hoping that they don't run on Colorado Square, and it doesn't look like they will be because they're getting six spaces. And six spaces for the Boston Bruins, that's going to allow them to claim their first property. Next up is the Dallas Stars, and they're just hoping that they're not going to have to pay anyone, and it doesn't look like they will be because they're going to be getting a chance space here. And like I just said, they're landing on the chance space here, so they're either going to be getting a lot of money, or they're going to be losing a lot of money. So this spin on the wheel of chance could work out either really well for them or really bad, and it's not looking good here, as they're going to be losing $300. And that is a tough look right there for the Dallas Stars, because they're losing $300, and now they're tied for last place. So Philly's looking for a different result here. They don't want to be losing $300, but they're only going to be getting one space here. One space isn't really going to be doing too much, though, because they're just visiting jail. Vegas is looking to make some big moves here, and now they're moving six spaces. And with Vegas moving six spaces, that means they're going to be claiming the most expensive property so far. This space is good and bad for Vegas, because although they're picking up an expensive property here, they've actually now moved into dead last because they only have $1,100. The Rangers are praying here that they're not going to owe another team money, and it doesn't look like they will be because they're only going to be moving one spot. But just because they're not owing another team money doesn't mean they won't be losing some because we're going to have to spin the Wheel of Chance here. So here's our second wheel spin on the Wheel of Chance for this round, and it looks like the Rangers are getting luckier than the Dallas Stars as they're going to be getting $150. And with the $150 that the Rangers are picking up, they've moved to $1,600. We're down to our final two dice spins of round number two here, and the Detroit Red Wings are going to be moving two spots. So it looks like the rich are going to keep on getting richer here as the Philadelphia Flyers have now moved up to $1,525, while Detroit's dropped to $1,325. With our final dice roll of round number one, the Vancouver Canucks are going to be getting five spots, and I don't think that's a good look for them. Because five spaces is going to be costing this team even more money, because now they owe Colorado $200. And just like that, the Vancouver Canucks are barely over $1,000, while Colorado continues to roll in money as they have $2,200. For challenge number two, we're going to be simulating a season once again. However, this time around, rankings are going to be decided based on your team's top score. Now, I'm not going to lie, the results from this season simulation, a bit surprising, but number one is going to be Jason Robertson as he's picking up 90 points. Coming in second place, just over a point a game is going to be our Tame Pernair, and he's got 26 goals and 59 assists for 85 points. We're going to have ourselves a two-way tie for third, and that's going to include Nathan McKinnon, who's picking up 84, and the other guy picking up 84 points is the captain of the Detroit Red Wings, Dylan Larkin. Coming in at number five is going to be Brad Marchand, just above a point a game with 83. One of the biggest surprises to me was the lack of production from Jack Eichel, as he's only picking up 81 points, so Vegas is going to be losing a couple dollars here. Another guy whose production surprised me was Elias Pettersson, not even picking up 82 points here, he's only picking up 79. While the Philadelphia Flyers, I ain't gonna lie, I wasn't expecting a lot from you, but this right here, y'all have no excuse for. 54 points, Cam Atkinson, that's your leading scorer. 54 points. No, that's just an absolute embarrassment right there. So this is how the money is going to be divvied up. Dallas is picking up 200 here. The range is 150. Colorado and Detroit, they're both gaining $100. Boston's losing 50. Vegas is losing 100. Vancouver, you're losing 150. And Philly, honestly, you probably should lose $300 for that performance, but you're only going to be losing 200. Entering round number three, Colorado continues to dominate as they're sitting at $2,300. While the Vancouver Canucks, they've dropped below 1,000 here and they only have 900 left. So they got to make some big moves and they got to do it pretty quick here. So let's keep on rolling here. And with Colorado, 
all Rev's next dice spin, they're going to be picking up two spots. And it looks like two spots for that Avs is going to be sending them to the Wheel of Chance. Now let's go ahead and see, what is the Wheel of Chance going to be cooking up for the Colorado Avalanche? It looks like they're going to be losing $50 here. And considering what could have happened to the Colorado Avalanche, losing $50 isn't bad. The Boston Bruins are up next here, and it looks like they're going to be getting a two as well. And two spots for the Boston Bruins is leading them to a piece of property that they're going to be obtaining. And for a reasonable price and $175, it looks like Boston's going to be picking up their second property. The Dallas Stars are finding themselves in a very difficult position here because by picking up four spaces here, I'm pretty sure they owe someone money. And that is correct. By moving four spaces, it looks like they're going to owe the Colorado Avalanche $200. Philly's in a real tough spot here because no matter what happens, they're going to owe somebody money and it looks like they're picking up four spaces. And those four spaces is going to be costing Philly a lot of money because they're landing on a Boston Bruins property, so they owe them $225. Moving right on over to our next dice roll for the Vegas Golden Knights, they're going to be picking up four spaces as well. And for Vegas, four spots is actually what you don't want because you're landing on the chance space. If you were to get two, three, five, or six, then you would be claiming some more properties and they have pretty big payouts. But instead, you're risking it with the wheel of chance. So let's go ahead here, spin the wheel of chance, see what we're going to get here. And it looks like they're going to be picking up $50. So I guess that's not the end of the world. The Rangers are going to have themselves a difficult time avoiding some properties, but they're moving up five spaces. And five spaces is definitely not what this team wanted because now they got to pay the Boston Bruins 200 bucks. Similar to the Rangers, Detroit's in a tough spot here, but they're going to be moving ahead six spaces, but I don't think that's ideal for them. Six spaces almost got them all the way to free parking, but unfortunately it's not going to be, so they're going to have to pay the Vegas Golden Knights $225. Moving on to our last dice roll of round number three, Vancouver's moving two spots. And so far things have not been going Vancouver's way, so hopefully the Wheel of Chance can change that. So this could potentially be a game changer for Vancouver. $300 puts them back in the game, but losing $300 and they're close to elimination. Plus $150, things are looking good for Vancouver now. Plus 150 is going to be putting Vancouver back above $1,000 as they're sitting at $1,050. But with round number three complete, it's time for a new challenge. But this challenge was inspired by a video I just did the other day, and it's going to be first to score wins. However, there is one restriction, you have to score in the first period. So we got to make this matchup fair for every single team, and what's more fair than every single team taking on the San Jose Sharks? This team's 0-7-1 right now, and in those eight games they've played, they've scored eight goals. They're literally averaging a goal per game. That's some next level garbage right there. So after talking all that crap about the San Jose Sharks and saying how garbage they are, they're scoring 30 seconds into the game here and Colorado's losing. Ain't no way. And I guess I'm just unfamiliar with the San Jose Sharks because I guess this team is a wagon and they're going to be scoring on the Boston Bruins here and Boston's losing as well. San Jose's won more games in the past 10 seconds than they have all season so far. But eventually Subway's going to be able to score on the San Jose Sharks and that's going to be Rupe Hintz as he's going to be picking up the goal here. In the Philadelphia game, San Jose's going to be on the power play so clearly somebody's going to be picking up a goal here but it's not going to be the Sharks it's actually going to be Sean Couturier as he's picking one up for Philly. The San Jose Sharks are going to put up a bit of a fight against Vegas but with the full pressure mirror maxed out it's no problem for Colasar as he's going to bury the rebound. Unfortunately for the New York Rangers in our next matchup they're not going to be able to get the full pressure bar maxed out because San Jose is and with this team on a five on three they're going to find the back of the net. The Detroit Red Wings will be the only team featured in any matchup where there's going to be no goal scoring in the first period so they're not going to be gaining any dollars here but they're also not going to be losing any. In our final matchup the Vancouver Canucks are going to show off some nice passing before finding JT Miller. He's going to rip this one past Capo Kaknin and that means they're picking up $200. With this challenge coming to an end, the Dallas Stars, Philadelphia Flyers, Vegas Golden Knights, and Vancouver Canucks are all picking up $200. Meanwhile, the Detroit Red Wings, they're not going to be gaining or losing any, but the New York Rangers, Boston Bruins, and Colorado Avalanche, they're all going to be losing $200. With round number three in the books, Colorado continues to sit at the top with $2,250. Meanwhile, Detroit's sitting at the bottom with over a thousand less dollars than the Colorado Avalanche as they only have $1,200. So as we know, Colorado is getting the first dice roll here and they're going to be picking up a two and two spaces is finally going to have Colorado owing someone money as they have to pay $225 to the Vegas Golden Knights. So Colorado will still be above $2,000 but not by much as they're dropping to $2,025. Meanwhile Vegas is making big moves here and now they're up to $1,700. Boston as long as you don't screw this up you're going to be claiming some new property here but I'm not sure if three spaces is going to be enough to get past free parking. Luckily it is and they're going to be picking up the first orange space that's going to be $200 for them but if another team lands on it they're going to be making 250. Dallas is surrounded by owned property so it's going to be hard for them to avoid anything and it looks like they're moving up three spaces. And it looks like Boston's already making their money back because now Dallas owes them $225. Philly you've been chilling a lot recently so I want to see you do something so let's see what happens when you move up five spaces. And five spaces is going to be pretty interesting for the Philadelphia Flyers because now we got to spin the wheel of chance. So let's go ahead spin the wheel of chance and see what's going to be happening to the Philadelphia Flyers 
and it looks like they're going to be pass and go so that means they're getting two hundred dollars so the philadelphia flyers they're turning on the jets here and now they've reached go so they're picking up two hundred dollars the only bad thing for philly though is they're going to be missing out on all those properties that were available to be purchased vegas on the other hand they won't be but i should take that back because vegas they're getting sent to jail so now they're not going to be able to claim any of those properties all right new york it's time for you guys to spark the comeback here and three spaces is definitely not going to be enough. And that's actually one of the worst things you could have gotten because now you're landing on the green space owned by the Vegas Golden Knights and you're going to have to pay them $225. As long as Detroit gets a good roll here, then they could be claiming their first piece of property and it doesn't look like it because you're only moving up two spaces. And two spaces is literally the worst possible scenario because they're landing on Boston space and now they own some money. $250 to be exact. To finish up round number four here, Vancouver's about to spark the comeback. Just kidding, they're moving one space so they owe somebody money. If you moved ahead five spaces then you would have had a chance at making the greatest comeback but instead you're going to move one space fantastic work vancouver now you owe boston 225 dollars if you could get to this square right here that would have been massive you would have bought that for 200 dollars or even landing on the wheel of chance you would have been better off you could have at least got something from that or free parking you wouldn't have owed anyone money but instead nah you're gonna land right here and now you gotta give the Boston Bruins $225. But to finish up round number four, of course, we gotta see what our challenge is gonna be. And for challenge number four, we're heading back to the simulation and we're gonna see which team can pick up the most goalie shutouts. We're gonna see a ton of shutouts coming from the Detroit Red Wings this season as Billy Hoos is gonna be picking up six, James Reimer's picking up three, so they're picking up nine in total and they're gonna be our top team here. Coming in second is gonna be the Colorado Avalanches. We're gonna see Gorgiev picking up three shutouts while Francis is picking up two, totaling to five. We're then gonna have ourselves a two-way tie for third as the Philadelphia Flyers are picking up a combined four shutouts while Thatcher Demko is holding it down for the Vancouver Canucks as he's picked up four himself. Moving on we're going to see a three team tie with two shutouts each. It's starting with the Vegas Golden Knights as Robin Leonard's picking up two. We're then going to see two shutouts come from the Dallas Stars and that's going to be split between Jake Ottinger and Scott Wedgwood. And the other team combining for two shutouts is going to be the Boston Bruins as that's going to be split between Allmark and Swayman. But finally we're going to have our last place team and surprisingly that's going to be the New York Rangers as Igor Sesterkin's only going to be able to pick up one shutout. With challenge number three complete the Detroit Red Wings are picking up $200 the Colorado Avalanche they're picking up 150 Vancouver and Philly they're each gonna be picking up 100 while Vegas Dallas and Boston they're gonna be losing $50 each and the New York Rangers they're gonna be the big losers here as they're losing 200 entering round number five this is what the leaderboards looking like the Colorado Avalanche they continue to sit at the top with $2,175 while the New York Rangers they've fallen into last place only having 925 so they gotta make some big moves here and speaking of big moves how many spaces is the Colorado Avalanche gonna be moving only one and one space isn't really doing too much for them as they're just headed to free parking moving right on over to the boston bruins they're going to be moving four spaces and four spaces for the boston bruins is going to allow them to claim another property as they're picking up the first yellow property of the video but of course since the boston bruins have that bread this isn't going to affect them too much financially the dallas stars are looking to get something going here and this definitely is going to be good for them only one space and one space is one of the worst things they could have gotten because now they owe the vegas golden knights 225 dollars and 225 dollars that's going to allow vegas to reach the two thousand dollar mark while the dallas Dallas Stars, on the other hand, things aren't looking good for them because now they're below a thousand. Philly's back at the beginning of the board, so let's see what they can do as they're going to be picking up three spaces. And by moving three spaces, that's sending this team to the Wheel of Chance. So what is the Wheel of Chance going to be cooking up for the Philadelphia Flyers here? Well, it's not looking good. They're going to be losing all of their properties. So although Philly only owned one property, this is still going to be a massive loss for them. Meanwhile, for Vegas, they got a roll of four or higher for them to get out of jail, and if they're not able to, then they're going to have to pay $200. And a one is definitely not great than four. So Vegas, you're going to be dropping to $1,900 because you were unable to get out of jail. But now you're just visiting jail. This next roll is going to be for the New York Rangers and it looks like they're going to be moving two spaces. And it looks like things are going to continue to go bad for the New York Rangers as now they're going to be losing $250. And New York better step it up quick because now they've dropped all the way to $675. Definitely not ideal in a challenge like this. While the Boston Bruins, I don't think they're going to complain about moving up to over $1,700. We're down to our final two dice spins of the fifth round here and Detroit's going to be moving one space and although one space doesn't seem like much it is going to allow Detroit to claim their first property so although Detroit's dropped to $950 picking up a property is definitely worth it and here we go with our final dice spin of round number five the Vancouver Canucks are moving two spots and we got to give the Vancouver Canucks a round of applause because I believe this is the first round where they don't owe anyone money and now all they got to do is not lose money in this next challenge and it really shouldn't be difficult because our next challenge all you got to do is beat the Edmonton Oilers and it really shouldn't be that difficult because their second 
last in the entire league, and this team's full of a bunch of frauds. But they do have two guys in Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl, so it's still going to be a tough matchup. We're jumping right into our Colorado versus Edmonton matchup, and Colorado is going to be coming out hot in the first period, picking up two goals to Edmonton's one, so they're taking the lead in this game. But that lead's not going to be lasting too long here because Edmonton's picking up two goals in the second period, and now we've got a tie game. Colorado and Edmonton have been going back and forth the entire third period, but a late goal from Cogliano is going to give them the lead heading into the final two minutes. And it looks like that goal from Cogliano is going to be the difference maker, but just in case it isn't, Jonathan Drouin is going to pick up another for the Colorado Avalanche, and they're taking this one 6-4. to four. Moving right on into our Boston game, after the first period, neither team's going to be able to pick up a goal, but the offense is going to get started in the second period, and Brett Kulak, he's picked up the lone goal so far, and we're entering the final 20 minutes in a one-goal game. With Boston still down 1-0 in this game, Edmonton's going to continue to put on the pressure, and Dylan Hallway, he's going to be picking up the Oilers' second of the game, so that means the Boston Bruins are going to be falling 2-0. Moving on to our next matchup, the Dallas Stars taking on the Edmonton Oilers. Edmonton's offense is going to be flying in the first period as they're going to be picking up two goals. But in the second, that Edmonton defense is going to be standing tall as they're going to be allowing four goals here. And now we got ourselves a tie game entering the third period. And it looks like that Edmonton defense is going to continue to do what it does as Dallas is going to be picking up a goal. It's coming from Euro Heiskanen and they've got the lead entering the final minutes. In the final seconds of this one, Edmonton's going to have the goalie pulled, but they're not going to be able to get back into this one. Jason Robertson's going to bury the empty netter and Dallas is taking this one six to four. So here we go with our next matchup. The field Philadelphia Flyers taking on the Edmonton Oilers. Drysdale is going to be picking up the first goal of the game as Edmonton takes the lead. And in the second period, he's going to be picking up another one here. So Edmonton's got a 2 0 lead entering the final 20 minutes. In the third period, Philly would finally find a way to get on the board here, but Bouchard's going to be picking up an early one third as well. So it's still a two goal game in the final two minutes. At the end of the day, it just looks like the Philadelphia Flyers aren't going to be a match for the Edmonton Oilers. And Edmonton, they're going to pick up another goal. This one from Evander Kane. So they're going to be winning this one 4 1. We have ourselves a second round rematch with the Vegas Golden Knights taking on the Edmonton Oilers and Vegas is flying in the first period picking up three goals but Edmonton they're slowly making the comeback and now we have a one goal game in the final period. Warren Fogle would be able to tie this game up but Brain McNabb he's going to be picking up a massive goal and Vegas they currently have the lead with a minute 30 left. In the final seconds of this one Edmonton's trying to put some pressure on but it doesn't look like it's going to be enough. Marcheseau's bringing the puck into the offensive zone here he's going to bury the empty netter and Vegas is taking this one five to three. So this is a must win for the New York Rangers they got to come up big here and currently things aren't looking great as they're down 2-1 after 20 minutes. In the second period, they would find a way to work their way back into this game, but Connor Brown's going to give Edmonton the lead once again, and the Rangers, they got to make the comeback big time here because they can't afford to lose $200. Early in the third period, Edmonton would expand their lead to a 4-2-1, but Jacob Trouba is going to be picking up a big goal halfway through the period, but now we got two minutes left, and the Rangers, they still got time to make the comeback, but they got to do it quick. So I'm not going to lie, the Rangers, this is a bad look for you. Not only are you guys on the power play here, but it's also a four or five minute power play because it's longer than two minutes and you're allowing a shorthanded goal. That's tough. That's real tough. So we're down to our final two matchups, and now we have the Detroit Red Wings taking on the Edmonton Oilers. Bouchard's going to be picking up the first goal of the game here. Then it looks like Zach Hyman's going to double down in the second period, and Detroit, they now have quite the hill to climb to get back into this one. Edmonton's going to be able to pick up another goal in this one, but they're definitely not going to need it, as Detroit's going to be getting shut out here as they're falling 3-0. So here we go with our final matchup here, and it looks like after 20 minutes, we're still going to have ourselves a tie game. In the second period, though, JT Mill and Bouchard are both going to find the net, but it's still a tie game, so the next 20 minutes are going to be deciding this one. So we've had ourselves a ton of goal scoring going on during the third period. Vancouver would be able to pick up three straight, but then Edmonton's going to respond with two of their own. We got 30 seconds left in this game. Let's see if Edmonton can make the comeback. Edmonton didn't really have too much time here to spark a comeback, and it doesn't look like they're going to be able to complete one, and Vancouver's going to be taking this game four to three. So here's what the payouts are going to be looking like here. The Colorado Avalanche, Dallas Stars, Vegas Golden Knights, and Vancouver Canucks are all going to be getting $200, while the Red Wings, Rangers, Flyers, and Bruins, they're all going to be losing 200. So it's time to jump into round number six here. The Colorado Avalanche, they're still the clear favorite at 2,375, but Vegas is catching up because they're at 2,100. Meanwhile, the New York Rangers, it's not looking good for you guys. $475 left, and Detroit only 750. We could see some teams getting eliminated in the next few rounds. But like usual, of course, we have to start out with the Colorado Avalanche, and they're going to be moving five spaces here. But five spaces is going to be less than ideal, as they're going to be landing on the Boston Bruins spot, and now they owe them $275. And Boston Boston's looking to keep on moving here as long as they don't get number one they're going to be getting number six and six spaces is going to be giving them one of the most lucrative spots on the board and that's going to be the blue spaces they cost $300 to buy but if somebody lands on this space they're going to owe you $350. Dallas is in a tough position here because more than likely they're going to owe somebody a bit of money and now they're moving six spaces and it looks like six spaces is going to be sending them to some Boston Bruins property and now they owe them $275 and that $275 is definitely going to be hurting the Dallas Stars as now they've dropped below $1,000. 
dollars while the boston bruins they're going to be getting a bit of money back here and now they're just below 1800 25 dollars short of where they were before they bought that blue property philly's got themselves a few properties ahead of them that they can be picking up but it doesn't look like they're doing that as they're moving six spaces if they moved a one or a two they could have bought these properties right here but instead they're going to be spinning the wheel of chance once again last time philly spun this wheel it didn't really work out too well for them so hopefully it's better this time around and it actually might be worse as they're going to owe 50 dollars to everyone after paying everyone 50 dollars philly's going to be losing 350 here and they're dropping to 1050 dollars vegas missed their last turn while they were sitting in jail so hopefully they can spark something here and let's see what two spaces is going to give them two spaces isn't really going to be doing much other than owing the boston bruins a couple dollars here 200 dollars to be exact the new york rangers can't afford to land on any property that they don't own and unfortunately they don't own any property here and i don't know what four spaces has given them and it looks like things are getting worse for the new york rangers i thought they were going to be headed to jail but this might be even worse owing 275 dollars to the boston bruins so that means the boston bruins are now our richest team at 2300 dollars while the new york rangers they're now sitting at 250 dollars and there's a chance that they could be eliminated in the next round but let's not worry about that yet because we still have two teams that need to roll the dice and detroit they're going to be picking up one space one space might not seem like much but when you land on the wheel of chance it could be really good or really bad let's figure out which and for the detroit red wings it doesn't look like the wheel of chance is going to be on their side here as they're losing 200 dollars and that's a big loss for the detroit red wings because they already don't have that much money and now they've dropped to 600 dollars if the vancouver canucks pick up a four here they could be buying their first property but it doesn't look like that's going to be happening because two spots is going to have them landing on someone else's property that's the detroit red wings so detroit you might have just lost 200 dollars but you're going to be getting it back from the vancouver canucks so detroit you're back up to 800 dollars after that move while the vancouver canucks you're dropping below 1200 dollars with that roll right there each team's turns done through round number six so that means we're gonna have ourselves a challenge and it looks like our next challenge is gonna be a goal scoring one and teams are gonna be assigned points based on their best goal scorer after the season simulation we're gonna see nathan mckinnon come out on top as he's picking up 47 goals coming in seconds an absolutely elite goal scorer and david pasnack who's picking up 44 entering third place is gonna be jason robertson with 37 goals but honestly i'm pretty surprised that 37 goals is gonna be third out of all the teams we have here like there's a bunch of great players and 37 goals is gonna be third place meanwhile we're gonna have ourselves a two-way tie for fourth place to bring going to be one of the players here as he's picking up 32 goals while the other goal scorer tied with 32 points is going to be Artem Panarin from the New York Rangers so it looks like New York's going to be picking up a couple dollars here we're going to have ourselves another two-way tie and that's going to feature Mark Stone from the Vegas Golden Knights only 27 goals and then from the Vancouver Canucks also picking up 27 goals that's going to be Kuzmenko and just one goal shy of those two players right there that's going to be coming from the Philadelphia Flyers Sean Couturier Travis Konecki and Owen Tippett all those guys are picking up 26 here after that challenge right there the Avs are picking up 200 points Bruins 150 the Dallas Stars 100 Detroit and the Rangers they're both picking up $50 each Vancouver Canucks they're gonna be losing 100 here same with the Vegas Golden Knights while the Philadelphia Flyers they're gonna be losing 200 entering round number seven here we have ourselves a new leader and that's the Boston Bruins with $2,450 while the New York Rangers it's not looking good for them only $300 but let's get underway in round number seven and we're gonna be starting off with the Colorado Avalanche like usual and they're gonna be getting one space here and one space was definitely not what this team was hoping for because now they're being sent to jail moving on over to the Boston Bruins dice spin they're going to be picking up six spaces here and not only is six spaces going to allow Boston to pass go but they're also going to be picking up a new property here after passing go and buying that new space the Boston Bruins are still coming out ahead as they're going to be profiting $75 here and now they're over $2,500 the Dallas Stars are up next here and they're just hoping they don't land on number one but they're getting number six and that actually might be worse and through picking up six spaces here the Dallas Stars are going to land on that property that the Boston Bruins own so Dallas is going to owe them $350 so as Boston gets close to three thousand dollars the dallas stars are dropping to 675 dollars and just like that they're now sitting in second last place but depending on how this next spin goes for the philadelphia flyers that could be changing as philly now might be below the dallas stars and there's a good chance of that happening because philly's gonna be landing on the wheel of chance for the third turn in a row and so far the wheel of chance has definitely not been on their side so what is the wheel of chance thinking for the philadelphia flyers this time around well it's gonna hurt them once again minus 150 dollars and once again the philadelphia flyers they're unable to catch a break and they're down to $700. Next up is the Vegas Golden Knights, and it looks like they're going to be moving five spaces. And who would have seen this one come in? But by moving five spaces, Vegas is going to have to pay Boston some money. So Vegas, they're going to drop down to $1,600, while the Boston Bruins, they've surpassed the $3,000 mark, and they're at $3,125. But the real question is, what's going to be happening to the New York Rangers here? Well, they're going to be moving three spaces. Thankfully, it's not six spaces, so they won't be eliminated here to the Boston Bruins, but they are going to have to pay $250 for this square right here and they're only going to be left with $50 but we haven't reached the challenge yet because we still have two teams to roll here and it looks
looks like Detroit's going to be moving six spaces. And those six spaces are going to be huge for the Detroit Red Wings because they're landing on the community chess square. And as we know, with the community chess square, it gets $50 for every single round that's been played. And since we've completed six rounds so far, that means the Detroit Red Wings are going to be getting $300. So those $300 are going to help the Detroit Red Wings get above $1,000 and they're at $1,150. Moving on to our final dice roll, it's going to be the Vancouver Canucks getting six spaces. And I have bad news for Vancouver fans, but great news for New York Rangers fans. The Canucks, you're going to have to pay $300 to the Rangers and it looks like the Rangers are back in the game. So the New York Rangers, they're picking up $300 and they're up to $350, while the Vancouver Canucks, they've dropped to $775. For challenge number seven, there's one objective, score an overtime winner. And I'm going to put all these teams into an overtime game versus the St. Louis Blues. And if you can score an overtime winner, then you're going to be getting $200. If you're not able to score one, you're going to be getting zero. And if you lose the game, you're losing $200. So let's get into these matchups. Like usual, we're going to be starting off with the Colorado Avalanche here, and they're going to get some offense going. Nathan McKinnon to Miko Rantanen, Rantanen back to McKinnon, and he's going to be beating Jordan Bennington. So not only did Boston have a power play during overtime, but they also killed off a penalty, and it doesn't look like they're going to be able to pick up a goal here, so they're not going to be getting any additional money. But they're not going to be losing any money, so I guess that's sort of a win. The Dallas Stars are getting incredibly unlucky here, as Amiro Heiskanen's shot's going to be blocked by Tori Krug. He's going to have himself a breakaway, then he's going to flip a backhander past Jake Ottinger. The Philadelphia Flyers, though, I wouldn't really say this is unlucky but you just gave a skilled player way too much space and Robert Thomas he's gonna have no issue beating Carter Hart and our next matchup the Vegas Golden Knights are taking on the St. Louis Blues and Justin Falk honestly this is just a bad decision here going for the body check you're giving Chandler Stevenson a breakaway and he's gonna beat Jordan Bennington not gonna lie, watching this goal get scored against the St. Louis Blues hurt me a bit inside. Our Terry Panarin is gonna get tripped and lose control of the puck. It's gonna somehow end up on Zibanejad's stick and no defenseman is gonna pick him up, so he's gonna beat Benner. Unlike that St. Louis Rangers game, in this one we're gonna have a completely different outcome as neither team's gonna be able to find the back of the net. And it's gonna be the same outcome in the Vancouver St. Louis game as once again, neither team's finding the back of the net, so these teams aren't losing or gaining any money. So after all those overtime games, the Colorado Avalanche, Vegas School Knights, and New York Rangers are all picking up $200. The Vancouver Canucks, Detroit Red Wings, Boston Bruins, they're all going to be picking up $0 each, while the Philadelphia Flyers and Dallas Stars, they're going to be losing $200. So entering round number eight, this is what the board's looking like. We have a new team at the bottom, and that's the Dallas Stars with $475 left, while the Boston Bruins, things are looking fantastic for this team, as they have $3,125, and they continue to sit at the top. So let's get this round started off with a roll for the Colorado Avalanche, and it looks like they're going to be moving three spaces. But I completely forgot the Colorado Avalanche were in jail, and since they didn't get a four or higher, they're not going to be able to get out of jail without paying the fine and they're going to get out but that's going to cost them $200. So this next spin is going to be for the Boston Bruins and it looks like they're going to be moving six spaces here. And it looks like Boston's luck is running out here because they're finally going to land on a space they don't own so they're going to owe the Vegas Golden Knights $225. So while the Boston Bruins drop below $3,000 the Vegas Golden Knights are going to get above $2,000 as they're sitting at $2,025. The next dice spin here is for the Dallas Stars and it looks like they're going to be moving five spaces. On top of Dallas passing go and picking up $200 they're going to be picking up their first property of the video here. Moving right on over to the Philadelphia Flyers, it looks like they're going to be moving one space. Moving one space is going to cost Philly a couple dollars here, but at least they're not paying somebody else that money, they're buying a property. But it's going to be a pretty costly property because now they only have $275 left. Our next dice spin is going to have the Vegas Golden Knights moving four spaces. So I'm not sure what's better for Vegas, moving four spaces and paying the Boston Bruins a couple dollars here, or going to jail and then not owing anyone money. The Rangers have to be very careful here because they don't have a lot of spare money. And three spaces that's definitely not the move and those three spaces are going to be incredibly costly as now you owe the boston bruins 350 dollars the boston bruins are now above 3500 dollars honestly i didn't even think that would be possible while the new york rangers it's looking horrible for them they've dropped to 200 dollars and now they're in dead last there's not too many unoccupied properties left and four i think that's going to be sending them to the wheel of chance but what am I talking about? Because they would have needed six to make it there. They're going to be passing go. And on top of that, they're also going to be picking up another property. Vancouver's going to have our final dice spin in the first round. They're only going to be moving a single spot. But moving one spot's exactly what they wanted. They're going to be landing on the community chess spot. So that means they're adding another $350 to their bank. And that $350 is exactly what this team needed, as now they're back above $1,000. And to end this round, of course, we're going to need a challenge, and this time we got ourselves a playoff bracket. And like usual, money will be assigned based on each team's placement in the bracket. So here's the bracket right here, and how it was decided was the team with the most money is going to take on the team with the least amount of money, then second most takes on the team with the second least amount of money, so on and so forth, so let's get right into our matchups. It was a hard-fought series between the Boston Bruins and New York Rangers the entire way, but in Game 6 of this series, Shastrikin's going to stand on his head he's completing the shutout and the Rangers are off to the next round. 
The Vancouver Red Wings series would be an absolutely fantastic one. Not only are we going to need double overtime, but it's also a game seven and Lucas Raymond, he's going to be pot in the series winner. That's not going to be the only matchup that's going to need a game seven as Colorado and Philly are too. But in this game seven, Colorado is going to have full control and they're taking it five to one. Moving on to our final matchup between the Vegas Golden Knights and Dallas Stars. This one's also going to need seven games, but the worst part about this one, Vegas had a 3-0 series lead. They're going to choke away that lead, losing the next four straight and Dallas is advancing to the next round. So this is where our second round match are looking like we got the Detroit Red Wings taking on the New York Rangers and then the Colorado Avalanche taking on the Dallas Stars. The Red Wings and Rangers series is going to be a pretty boring one as the Rangers are going to control it the entire way and they're going to be taking the Red Wings down a quick sweep. Meanwhile, the Dallas Stars continue to work their magic because they're going to be advancing to the Stanley Cup final. But in this series, they might not be making a 3-0 series comeback, but they are going to be making a 3-1 comeback. So that means our Stanley Cup matchup is set. We got the Dallas Stars taking on the New York Rangers. And throughout the entire playoffs, it looks like nobody's going to be able to take down the Dallas Stars. This team knows how to battle through adversity, and they're going to be winning the Stanley Cup in five games. So with Dallas winning the Stanley Cup, they're going to be taking home the most dollars here as they're picking up 300. The New York Rangers are going to be getting 200, while the Colorado Avalanche and Detroit Red Wings, they're going to be picking up $100 each. Meanwhile, the Vancouver Canucks, Boston Bruins, Philadelphia Flyers, and Vegas Golden Knights, all four teams that fell in the first round, they're going to be losing $100 each. Entering round number nine, the Boston Bruins, even after losing $100, they continue to sit at the top. They got $3,425, while the Philadelphia Flyers, they better be careful here because they only have $175 left and they might be eliminated this round. But we're going to start off with the team that just got out of jail in the Colorado Avalanche and they're moving four spaces and it looks like four spaces is going to make the rich even richer as the Colorado Avalanche are going to owe the Boston Bruins $225. So Boston just picked up $225 and now they're rolling the dice themselves and they're going to be moving four spaces. And Boston's going to be risking a lot here by moving four spaces because they're going to be landing on the Wheel of Chance. And we have to remember, one of the possibilities on the Wheel of Chance, losing all of your properties. So is the Wheel of Chance going to work out for the Boston Bruins or is it going to do them dirty? It's not too bad. $50? Could have been way worse. It's time to see what the Dallas Stars are going to do, and it doesn't look like they're doing much as they're only going to be moving one space. And a singular space is going to be hurting the Dallas Stars, as now they got to pay the Boston Bruins some money. So the Dallas Stars are going to drop to $675, while the Boston Bruins, they're just under $3,900. Now here we go with the biggest dice roll of the video. What's going to happen to the Philadelphia Flyers? They're going to move six spaces. And it looks like six spaces for the Philadelphia Flyers is going to move them onto this free property here, but unfortunately they can't buy it because they don't have enough money, so they will be surviving in here but not really much is happening up next is the vegas golden knights and it looks like they're gonna be moving five spots and philly's getting so lucky here because vegas they're gonna be landing on that property that philly also landed on but since vegas is landing on it after philly philly's not gonna have to pay vegas any money but vegas is gonna be buying this property for 300 the new york rangers are gonna be pass and go here but are they gonna have to owe anyone money but unfortunately i think they're gonna have to because three spaces for the new york Rangers is gonna be landing on this colorado square but after everything's said and done the rangers are still making a 50 dollars profit by picking up the 200 for pass and go detroit's up next here and it looks like their dice roll is only gonna be giving them one space and one space is unfortunate for this team because they're landing on the same Colorado square that the Rangers landed on so they're gonna have to send Colorado $150 and here we go with our last dice roll of round number nine here and it looks like the Vancouver Canucks are moving two spaces and that's the last thing they wanted because two spaces is gonna be costing this team a lot of money as now they have to pay the Boston Bruins $350 so the Vancouver Canucks are gonna drop all the way down to $675 while the Boston Bruins have surpassed the $4,000 mark and they're at $4,225 and I think think they got this all wrapped up but this next challenge here could really change absolutely everything each of these teams is going to be taking on the greatest players of all time in the alumni team and for every goal you score that's going to be a hundred dollars and on top of that if you're able to win the game whatever money amount you want we're going to times it by two so i'm not going to lie the colorado avalanche against the greatest players of all time y'all are doing better than i was expecting and now we're headed to overtime in a 3-3 tie but with these legends having the power play in overtime it's no surprise they're eventually going to find the back of the net and that's exactly what team Mussolini is going to be doing the dominance of this boston bruins team right here actually makes no sense not only are they going to be beating the greatest players of all time 4-3, to three, but that means they're going to be getting 800 points because they're getting 400 for the amount of goals they've scored, and then we've got to times it by 2 because they beat the team, and that means they're going to be picking up $800. And there's something pretty significant with the Boston Bruins picking up $800, so we don't need to watch the rest of the matchups, but here are the outcomes. Dallas is picking up 1000 Vegas is picking up 1000 as well. The Colorado Avalanche and Vancouver Canucks are getting 300 each, while the Philadelphia Flyers, New York Rangers, and Detroit Red Wings, they're all getting 100 as well. And what was so significant about the Boston Bruins picking up $800 well that means they're going to be surpassing $5,000 and they're the first ever winners of NHL Monopoly.